So food diplomacy has been around for a long time, but it's been lately coined by the academic world as a form of public diplomacy, a form of cultural diplomacy that is using food very consciously to win not only the stomachs of the people, but also their hearts and their minds. So it's a way to approach uh, either diplomats or the public using food not as a, as a little insignificant part of it, but actually as the main ingredient to transmit um, identity, culture, and values of a country. I guess every country has been doing that for a while, but a conscious public uh, diplomacy use of food has been developed only in a few countries recently where they have a dedicated team, a dedicated budget, uh, and a dedicated staff that is actually taking care of this. It's Thailand that has started. Then there's the Nordic countries, Peru. Um, and a few other Asian countries, such as Malaysia, Korea, uh, but middle power, as we would say in, in political science, which are countries that don't have a huge economic or military powerhouse, but they're trying to use different means of getting engaged into the international scene and getting their space and power space a bit coined around food. Switzerland is a hard case because um, for a lot of people, when you say what is Swiss food, they would have trouble finding recipes. They would often mention chocolate and cheese. Um, to me, the Swiss diplomacy through food is also a way of saying that Switzerland, we are a place of encounters between north and south, between butter countries and oil countries. Uh, we are at the crossroad with the Alps of a lot of influences. So I think our terroir, our Swiss terroir, is actually an international terroir, and we could also sell ourselves, um, our identity as this multicultural identity, because of course we have amazing products that have recognition through the world, but I guess in terms of values, what we should sell is the value of multiculturality, and, um, and I think this is what would qualify us in Switzerland. It's definitely a moment of interest where we are trying to pin down what we are and who we are. And I think it's important internally, are we going to be able to agree between all the different languages and cantons and cultures? Are we going to be able to find a common identity? So that's, this is already important because before going outside, we need to agree inside. And the pavilion is a representation uh, what is always interesting is looking backwards, and I think in previous um, world exhibitions we already had Swiss chalets, and all of a sudden now we're moving towards a more innovative, dynamic, um, uh, solidarity Switzerland, which I think is an interesting move forward, a bit away from the folkloristic uh, mood, which is always important, uh, but I think is only part of the story, and, and I think our pavilion uh, will be definitely a, a stone uh, where to move forward uh, from in the future as well. My preferred Swiss dish, I guess, is fondue because it actually is this representation of sharing as well. Well, first of all, I'm from the Fribourg area, so I actually would always go for a moitié-moitié or a 100% vacherin. But I guess what is interesting in the fondue, uh, except that it's actually quite a modern dish, you know, it's been invented for 100 years in the actual form of a pot where we all share a fork, but what I like is this sharing. It's a sharing dish, and I think that's part of what Switzerland can also be and should be in the world.